What's going on? We back, another video. Um, so I just appreciate everybody who uh, submitted their questions. And um, we're gonna answer these questions today with the best biblical evidence that I found. Um, the Holy Ghost really just uh, led me throughout this whole process and trying to get all these answers found and answered the best possible way for you guys. Um, so we'll just jump right into the questions. Uh, the first question says, who created God? And that answer is found, um, you can find it all over the biblical text, but uh, I, I wanted to use this scripture here. Revelations 22, 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So most people think God has to have a creator because we are creations and we naturally have a creator. But but that's not the case um see god is not he's not a creation um before he was he was he doesn't exist see we are limited to time as humans but god created time he's not he's not in time he exists outside of time he exists in eternal that's why when we die our souls they go to be our souls are still eternal god already exists in eternal so he we, he doesn't he has no beginning, neither an end. He's an eternal being. Um, neither does he have a creator. He is the beginning and the end. Um, and that's the atheist nightmare question right there. But um, yeah, so we, we always naturally think something has to have a creator. Something has to have a mother and a father. But no, God is not a being that he should be created. He exists eternally. He was never not created. That's a better answer to that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the answer to that one. The second question was, uh, how to ask for the Holy Spirit in prayer. Now, for this question, what I typically do, I typically address the Holy Spirit. I address the Holy Spirit just like I, I address Jesus Christ and I address God the Father. It's a Godhead, so it's, it's, it's the Trinity. The God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So I invite the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, come on. I, I welcome the Holy Spirit in when I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, take full control. Holy Spirit, take all the legal ground. Um, and that's how that happens. Now, um, if you're chasing some sort of feeling, see the feeling is not always gonna be there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So you, you have to stop. Don't, don't worry about the feeling so much. Sometimes God will make his presence known, but, but um, don't worry about having a feeling all the time. And another, on, on, another add-on to that would be you have to create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit um, in your lifestyle, in your home. Like if you're living a reckless life full of sin and rebellion against God, don't expect the Holy Spirit just to walk in and be present. No, the Holy Spirit is very, it's a sensitive spirit. So you have to be very careful with what you're doing. Um, just as far as your lifestyle and, and make sure your home is a nice place for the Holy Spirit as well. You know, if you have a bunch of pagan idols, Hindu gods, Buddha and all these things in your house, you're not going to, the Holy Spirit doesn't reside with other gods. He says, you ha shall have no other gods before me. That's why when they put the Ark of the Covenant, they put the Ark, when in back in Israel, when the Ark of the, when the, Ark and the, Ark of the Covenant got captured and they put it and it, it got captured and they put it in their 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 idol temple the the holy spirit knocked over their god the holy spirit knocked their god on their face and the whole camp got all of them got inflicted with disease because you shall have no other gods before me so that's why and then they gave it back to the israelites after it had got gotten taken because that's just that just shows you the presence of God was even can rest on an item. Just like the presence of God can rest on an item, the presence of the devil can rest on an item. So you have to make sure your home is safe. If you're praying a bunch of demonic music, you know, everything's of two kingdoms. So everything's of two kingdoms, whether it's music, a movie, a TV show, everything's of a kingdom. It's only two kingdoms. It's God's kingdom, it's the devil's kingdom. So if it's not of God's kingdom, and you're listening to that type of stuff and you create an atmosphere for the demonic spirits then 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 god's spirit naturally does not is not going to want to dwell there um uh question but other than that um next question is um 
who stumbled upon the Bible? So this is a good question. Now we know the Bible tells us the Bible tells us most of the authors of each each book in the Bible. So we know, um, but some of the books. Um, so the first five books are the Torah are called the Torah, and that's what the modern day Jewish people, they study, they don't accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They study the five first books, but Jesus already came and fulfilled all their prophecies, but they're so blind that they don't even know that Jesus came, so they're still stuck in the first five books in the Bible when we've been given even more books. We've been given even more instruction, so they're stuck on the first five books. And uh, most of these books here, the first five books of the Bible, Sorry, I have my nephew here. <laughs> but um, the first five books of the Bible are the Torah, and they were wit written by um, Moses. Now, most of these authors, some of the authors, like like the Book of Ruth and the Book of um, and the Book of uh, Judges and Samuel and Kings, some of these books we don't really know who wrote these books, but um, we do know. We do know uh, uh, Proverbs, for instance. Proverbs was, it says in the book of Proverbs that Proverbs was written by the King Solomon. And it says in the book of Psalms that most of the book of Psalms was written by King David. And, and somebody else is just recording. And um, we know that they continue to have recorders. Um, so we know. And we know most of the New Testament, when we break down into the New Testament, most of the New Testament is written by Paul the Apostle. He wrote all the books, Romans, Acts, um, Corinthians, Philippians, Timothy. He wrote all those books. Um, and um, yeah, we know that the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written by the respective person who's, who's the book is named by, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and they were just the recorders. Some of them were the actual disciples who wrote it. Some, some, some were just recorders. Like Mark wasn't an actual disciple. He was just a recorder. That's why we don't see him in the Bible. And um, the book of Revelations, for instance, was written by the, the, by most people believe that it was written by the apostle John, who was, um, uh, who was the, who is described in as in the Bible as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And um, he rested on his bosom, and, and that's just—he just had a special connection with Jesus. And the revelation is not the revelation of John; it's actually the revelation of Jesus given to John. So, um, and then we have what were um, what were the written chapters uh, the Bible left out? So the Bible didn't leave out any any chapters. People over time took out chapters um, of the Bible. Evil people probably we don't know exactly who took out the Bible but um, as we know throughout history people have constantly been um, trying to destroy the Bible constantly trying to destroy Christians in general um, but God always preserved his word that's why we're still we still have a copy of the Bible today they could have took out 45 books out of this book but guess what I have this Bible and this Bible is all you need you don't need another Bible you don't need more books if you need them God would have preserved his word just like he's preserved the books that are in here now I'm telling you you go through this Bible nobody there's plenty of people you know you don't need to make it it's not a sal salvation issue that that uh, that other Bibles were taken out of the Bible or other books were taken out of the Bible. It's not a salvation issue. Um, if you want to go down that route, there is different routes where you can find the different books of the Bible that were lost. But I would say focus on this Bible first. And once you get this Bible down and locked down and you and you can start walking in the power and the living word that is this Bible, then, then you can start ex trying to find different books. But this book has everything you need. It's not lacking in any in any form um, and then in 2nd Timothy 3 16 it says all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work um, and the next question was is it disrespectful to God for us to have partners who practice other religions now now, as I have seen, and as you can easily tell, it's very difficult when you have someone who doesn't practice the same faith as you, but you as a, as a, as a child of God, as a child of God have to make sure that you, that you are 
aligned to God. Um, see, there was a problem. So in 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 Numbers 33:52, uh, God, this is where God tells the Israelites what to do. He says, drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you destroy all their carved images and cast their idols and demolish all their high places. This is because God didn't want his chosen people, you and I, he didn't want you and I, neither did he want the Israelites back in the day, he didn't want them to intermingle with these people. Because, because once you intermingle with these people, first is intermingling, and then it's then you begin to adopt what they adopt. Now, if you're in a relationship with somebody and he, they're trying to get you to adopt their gods, it's probably not not the best to be in that relationship. Um, in First Kings 11, one through three, we we uh, Kings it says um, first in First Kings 11 it says King Solomon loved many foreign women in addition to Pharaoh's daughter. He loved Hittite women. He loved Hittite, Hittite women and women from Moab, Ammon, Edom, and Sidon. They came from the nations about which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, never intermarry with them. They will surely tempt you to follow their gods. But Solomon was possessed, obsessed with their love. He had 700 wives who were princesses and 300 wives who were concubines. In his old age, his wives had tempted him to follow other gods he was no longer committed to the lord his god as his father david had been now we see that over time solomon adopted first first he brought them into his land right he he, he called out he got all these wives and then over time he started following their gods and making their gods get worshiped too but we know that all the all other gods jesus said he is the way the life and the truth there is no other way to the father all other gods are demons and idols um, in 1st Corinthians 7 14 um, this is for this this is for like if you're if you're married if this is for if you're married to an unbeliever in 1st Corinthians uh, 7 14 it says for the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her through her believing husband so the the unbeliever is still sanctified through the believer in the house and over time if the holy spirit is doing what the holy spirit is doing and you're praying for that person to finally come to christ usually that person ends up getting saved now if it's becoming a relationship where you're starting to change and you're starting to follow after his likeness then you need to adjust that you need to come back into your own come back under the under god's under God's countenance, come back under God's arm because that's the arm that will protect you. That's the arm that will lead you and guide you in all truth and righteousness. Um, um, but yes, we we see here that the the unbeliever still sanctif sanctif the believer still sanctifies the unbeliever in a way. But y even if even if it's that sort of situation, if you have that relationship where it's the uh, unbeliever and a believer or a, a, somebody who's worshiping a false god versus somebody who's wor worshiping our true god, then, then you run into a lot of problems. It's easier just to, you know, even if, even if it's not, they don't have the best relationship with God, it's easier um, to just have someone with the same belief system. And, um, you never know, you know, that all, worshiping other gods and doing all that other stuff when that activity is going on in your house, that's how demon, that's how the devil gets his open doors. That's how he starts to ruin things. And the, just like the, God uses people, he, he uses his people and he places them strategically to help people. The devil places his people strategically to, to do the tearing down. See, the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy, and he uses his people to do that. He uses his puppets to do that. He uses the people who are under idolatry, the people who are serving false gods to destroy and tear down the people who um, the people who are under God. Because God, because the devil hates God, there's naturally a fight always going on in the spiritual realm. Always. Um, and God will use his people and the devil will also use his people. So understand that that person, you can't, first of all, you can't expect anything from him because he's not under God's law. He's not under God's moral standard. He's not under anything. And that's just, it'll be more trouble for you in the long run. Now, if you want to take that, 
take that uh, road. I know a lot of people who take who take that road, and uh, it's a very difficult road. Is it impossible? No. Um, next question, and uh, question four: How would Jesus handle today's pandemic? What does God expect us to do while all of this is happening? And how can we uplift each other, not just by prayer? The answer: I'm just going to tell you a story in Mark. 438 it says Jesus was inside the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow the followers went and woke him and they said teacher don't you care about us we are going to drown and Jesus stood up and gave the command to the wind and the water he said quiet be still the wind stopped and the lake became calm the lake became calm he said to his followers, why are you so afraid? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus was saying, just like, just like this, just like this image, you, we can take this picture to create an image, right? The world and what's going on in our lives is a rocky, rocky ship. But the disciples at this time, they, they came to Jesus. They came to God and they said, God, you know, what is going on? Would you have it that all of us just die right now? And that's that's sometimes what we do we go before God and we panic we're like we don't know what's going on in God God has the power God is in God has all control what does he say what does God say he said quiet be still that's what God said and the wind and the, then the wind stopped and the lake became calm see if you if you're quiet you be still be faithful he did what did he say why are you so afraid do you still have no faith? He's telling, have some faith. Everything is gonna, it's gonna be rocky. It's gonna look shaky. That's how, that's just how we're natural. This, this is what the, this is the world we live in. Everything's shaky. Everything's rocky. We're not meant down here to be invincible creations. No, we're, we're meant to be tested and tried and learn who God is and learn to come to know and love him and le learn to love even in serving him. So that is, um, that's pretty much the answer to that question. Um, now you said, um, and also in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or, you, or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not the life more than the food. It's not the life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow not, or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you, are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you worry by worrying at a single hour to your life? God is telling you one more time to just trust in Him. In all things, He just wants you to trust in Him. He says, "I take care of the birds. They don't they don't plant seeds. Neither do they go get seeds. They don't do all this stuff. Neither do they store all this stuff away in barns and hidden places. No, but He feeds them." How much more will he feed you? How much more will he protect you? How much more will he watch over you? Um, that's what uh, that's what he's trying to convey. And also, Psalm 46:10 it says, "Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge." Now, a woman that came up to me before she asked me, she was like, and we were talking about the COVID vaccine. She was she was asking, she was like, oh, you know, um, what are we gonna do if we lose our jobs? And I told her, and I told her straight up, I, I told her, listen, if my faith was in my job, then I would be scared. But my faith is not in my job. And that right there, that right there, we didn't, I didn't, we didn't have to say anything after that because, because, our, our mindsets are in two different places, right? Her faith is in her boss to protect her, but I'm, my faith is in God. I know God will protect me. He has continued to provide. Um, um, and what can we do to uplift each other? Um, so for, for specifically for an unbeliever, um, to uplift somebody like that, you really want to, before anything, I would say the the most thing, the best thing you can do for an unbeliever is tell them about Jesus. Mark 16 says, he, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Listen, 
the best thing you can do if somebody doesn't believe the best thing you can do is give them the words of eternal life give them the words of Jesus give them the gospel of Jesus Christ because the truth is every answer under the Sun is Jesus Christ you just have to know it you just have to know it the Bible says always be ready to tell people why you have so much hope in Jesus always be ready to share with someone why you believe in Jesus always be ready and um, that's for unbelievers so to uplift believers um, let's look at uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 31 in Luke 10 31 let's go Matthew Mark Luke in Luke In Luke 10 31 and it said this is the parable of the Good Samaritan it says and by chance there came down a certain priest or uh, let's start in uh, chapter uh, in uh, the scripture 30 Luke 10 30 and it says and Jesus answering said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment his clothes and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came a down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side so there's a priest who came and he just passed by him he 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 works in the synagogue for God and then and likewise a levite when he was he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side and, and there we go, another holy person, supposed to be this holy person, this Pharisee, this Levite, this person who's called to be a helper. He just passes on the other side and then, and, and then it says, but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of them and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again I will repay thee this was the good Samaritan see we see we see the two people who are supposed to be serving God they walked right by the person right we sometimes in life that's us we walk right by the person we can see somebody crying we can see somebody in distress but we walk right beside them instead of actually helping them stopping being that good Samaritan you see your brothers down you see somebody you know isn't looking the best hey you know you see somebody's spirit is low you know you see somebody's countenance their face they're not as they usually are you go up to that person step out of your way no you know what maybe we're not all we're not always in the good circumstances right we're not always in the the best situations right and we try to you know oh I'm I'm in this situation how am I gonna help the next person but the thing is you, you, it says in the kingdom of God, you, if you want to be first, you got to put yourself last. Just like Jesus did. He put himself last. He put himself on a cross. He put himself on a cross. So you have to put yourself last. You have to put others before yourself. And you walk in that light. And that's what you do. You have to, you know, you have to be sensitive to these type of things. Because every time you have that opportunity, you need to be stopping, you know, and seeing what you can do and that's what we're called to do we're called to be the light of the world Matthew 5 14 through 16 says you are the light of the world a town built on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl you are the lamp you are that lamp not people don't light. God gives you his spirit he lights you up and he, he's not he, he doesn't want you to cover up that light right he wants you to be that light neither do people light a light a lamp and put it under a bowl but instead they put it on a stand they put it on a stand and it gives light unto everyone that is in the house in the same let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven you know when you help somebody they're gonna be like man I don't know what's you know I don't know what then you share with them the gospel man it just helps it just helps this is how you connect this is how you uplift each other this is how you uplift unbelievers and believers alike number five this is a very good question this is why people stay away from God this is why uh, a lot of atheists they don't want to turn to God they say why is this is the question why is there so much suffering 
and why is there so much hate towards each other and that the answer for both of those for suffering for suffering I'm gonna answer it for suffering and for hate first I'll answer for hate and for hate we can go to why is there so much hate in the world we can go down to Galatians 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 5 5 19 and before I even explain this I have to explain this part the flesh the the flesh the works when when it says works of the flesh it's talking about the sin nature my friend we are not sinners because we sin we are sinner we sin because we are in we are sinners naturally when Adam sinned in the garden he ate from the tree and disobeyed God he brought sin into the world and everybody after Adam has sinned because we gained from our from our forefather our ancestor Adam we gained the sin nature that's what it, we are not sinners because we sin we sin because we are sinners now when I say the work of the flesh the flesh the flesh is what Adam brought to us he he cursed our flesh our our skin he cursed our our flesh when he sinned against God and then the works of the flesh are manifest these are the flesh the fleshly things that we inherited now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lust idolatry witchcraft hatred 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 we could stop right there we could stop at hatred it's a work of the flesh which means we inherited hatred this means nobody has to teach us to hate anybody nobody has to teach us to lie nobody has to teach us to hate we naturally hate people because we have a sin nature now i'm gonna address where we'll address in the next in the next question how we defeat the sin nature but that's where hate comes from it's a natural thing it's a natural sin nature it comes from adam and we inherited it um and now we can go back up and we can answer the question why is there so much suffering now suffering for the believer why we suffer acts 5 40 acts 5 41 the apostles left this sanhedrin the apostles were preaching the word peter and the apostles they're preaching the word and they get captured up they get captured up they got beat they got they got beat and they told them hey don't preach in the name of Jesus anymore and the apostles left the Sanhedrin they left a council of those people who beat them they're rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus Christ they they were they were glad now listen understand for a believer we experience we we will always experience suffering not because not because um not because it's God, but because naturally the people who are under Satan, they have a vendetta against the people who are under God. It's a spiritual thing. That's why it says um, we don't wrestle. Our, re our weapons are not carnal. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual. We wrestle in the spirit. We we're wrestling every day. It's a day and night fight. You know, uh, just like even... even um, if you, you you will be persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that. If you haven't re received persecution yet, it's because you are hiding the Jesus Christ that's in you. Stop hiding Jesus Christ. Share Jesus Christ. Put your light on display. Let people see so they can glorify your Father in heaven. At the end of the day, if you're beat for the name of Jesus Christ, it says great. Great is your reward in heaven. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Listen, you, we will, as believers, we will suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. We are called not to suffer, but we are called to be like Christ. And if they delivered Christ up unto the cross, they will persecute you in that same manner. Don't expect everybody to be happy-go-lucky with you. That's not how we are to lead. We, we we suffer because Christ had to suffer and but just like they hated Christ they will hate you if you are walking in the right steps like Christ walks being called a being a Christian doesn't mean you know go to church on Sunday and clap your hands and sing 
two slow songs, two flash songs, have fun, get a good word, leave out the same way as you came in. No, that's not being a Christian. Christian is doing the things Christ did. Christ healed the sick, he cast out demons, he raised the dead, and he said, Behold, I give unto you power. He said, go do the same works, even greater works than I did. He didn't say go to church and go sing and clap and do. No, he, he said, go and do what I did. Go do greater things than I did. So that's what you're called to do. You're not called to live some lukewarm, you know, happy-go-lucky, not really changing, same Christianity, same old boring life. You're not called to do that. My friend, you're called to live in the power of God. Now, uh, for unbelievers right why do unbelievers suffer Hosea 7:13. woe to them for they have estrayed from me destruction to them for they have rebelled against me I would redeem them but they speak lies against me these are the words of God John 3 36 who believes in the son has eternal life but whoever rejects the son will not see life for God's wrath remains on them second Chronicles 7 14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land God you have the promise of God once these people come under the repentance and they they realize that this life ain't really too much worth living you know once they realize you know that god is in control once they realize that they can't live without god then they'll turn from their wicked ways but will they actually do that no because the book of revelation has to happen right that's prophecy now now moving on what does Christ mean when he says, whom the Son sets free, he is free indeed? To what degree do we have freedom? The answer found in Revel the answer is found all over the, the the Bible. Okay, what did Christ actually set us free from? I'm just gonna give you a couple examples. Uh, Revelation 1:18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Jesus Christ set us free from hell and death spiritual death spiritual death because it says in the bible it says in the bible those who have not believed are dead already you are already spiritually dead one that's why when you're born again when it's born again and you get baptized in water you die with christ and you rise with christ because you being dead in your sins were dead and jesus gives you a new birth that's why he says um, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless you're born of water and spirit. Um, of water and spirit. Now, <clears throat> now uh, moving forward in Hebrew, uh, in, I'm, I have a bunch of scriptures to unload this question uh, of Jesus setting us free. Now, he Hebrews 2. 14 through 15 says since the children have flesh and blood he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death that is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death the fear of death was it once you are born again you become a christian you enter you you have to enter into you born of water and spirit once you receive the holy spirit you believe on the son you repent of your sins you turn then that's when the fear of death leaves you because you know you have eternal life i don't have to question anymore you know it god sets it in your spirit that he gives you the confidence that's why it says you will go to the throne with confidence if you fear death right now the bible says you are not saved it says all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death how, how how tell me this how can you be scared of death when you know jesus rose again and he said you have eternal life through him it's it's of the devil you have to repent you have to even repent from fear of i would repent from fear alone because fear is not even of god fear is not of god it says fear god but it doesn't say have fear no you fear God and you fear God alone. So we know that he set us free from the fear of death because now we know that we have eternal life in Christ Jesus. John 8.34 says, Jesus replied, Verily I 
I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Think about it. You are a slave to sin. You will not be able to. Ch I'm telling you right now. If you go, you if you go, um, if you're not under Jesus Christ, if you're not under the covering, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are a slave to sin. You cannot help it. You will naturally sin. You will naturally hate people. You will naturally lie. You'll naturally steal. You'll naturally uh, fornicate. You'll naturally do whatever your heart sees as fit you'll naturally do all the pleasures that you want to do you'll naturally want to go get drunk you'll naturally go do all these things nobody has to tell you to do all these things you're a slave to it that's what the bible says then romans 6 18 says you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness jesus set us free from sin that's why when when somebody tells you oh hey brother hey brother we all go through the same problem no stop listening to that you are supposed to, you are called to live a greater life set aside from sin but does that mean we are not going to fall short no my brothers and sisters you will fall short i fall short everybody falls short nobody's perfect i fall short i'm under christ i'm i have the holy spirit i, I still fall short but i fall short i repent and i get back up what is the what does the verse say in the bible it says the wise man shall fall many times but he will get back up he will get back up he will get back up you gotta remember that verse romans 6 18. thank you holy spirit uh, romans 6 8 okay now uh this was this is the last question the seventh question seven is the number of completion so hey it might as well be the last question now this question is it says how can you receive a power prayer it says how can you receive a power prayer <laughs> so my answer to that question is you don't need to receive a power prayer god has power he doesn't need you to have power and the holy spirit has the power acts 1 8 says you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and unto the ends of the earth jesus he he went and started his ministry 40 years after he got after he got the holy spirit after the dove the spirit from God landed on him. That's when he went to go heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, miracles, signs and wonders. That's when Jesus went to go do what he did. It was when he received the Holy Spirit. And same is alike with me and you, brothers and sisters. When we receive the Holy Spirit, power is given unto us. Now, you saying receive a power prayer. You, I mean, there's also something called impartation where a man of God who's called and, and works in certain areas of ministry, he can lay hands on you and it can increase your spiritual ability. It's not scriptural. It's not scriptural, but it's it happens. I know many prophets who man of God lay hands on them and then their prophetic started flowing. The prophetic gifts started flowing. So it's it's. It's different things. Now, if you're talking about receiving power, the, the power is in the Holy Spirit. It's not your power. It's not your power. And God knows your heart. He knows what you're going to use. He's not going to land his Holy Spirit on you if he knows you're going to use it for your glory. He wants to use his spirit for his glory. And, 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 and you are not trying to go outside of his glory and take glory for yourself and use it for the wrong things which a lot of people still use the spirit of God for the wrong things. But listen, once you, everything is motivated by love. And mostly it's the love of God and the love for advancing the kingdom. So that's how you, and that's when, you know, the Holy Spirit will come become useful. You know, you start doing the things that Jesus did. It says, after you receive the Holy Spirit, power will come to you. He said, it comes on you and you will be my, you will receive power. That's what he said. You will receive power. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, that is it for our Q&A. I thank you for everybody who, ans who asked me questions. I hope that these scriptures helped you. I hope that this helped you in your walk with God. And I, I hope we can do this again sometimes. But I do want to pray for you guys right now real quick. Um, I want to pray for you guys real quick. Um, just for the receiving of the Holy Spirit. I feel like I feel like sometimes you know we get a far we get a far away from God. And we get so far away from him that we can't 
we can't receive the things he has for us we can't even receive it and we may be even we may even have the holy spirit right but we're not even walking in it because it's been so long we've been living in sin and messing up for so long and not repenting and stuff like you know stuff gets in the way of the holy spirit it really does and god has always called us to be He's, he's called us to walk in power. He's never told us to, you know, walk in some sort of, uh, you know, happy-go-lucky life and just kind of get a white picket fence in the golden retriever. No, God has called us to live powerful lives, sanctified, holy lives, not lives full of sin. He's called to us to live sanctified, holy lives in his power, in his presence, and then enter into eternal life with him. Now, if you want to receive that, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, Everything in the, under the kingdom is received by faith, d d accord, and everything is according to the measure of faith. So right now, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, or if you have the Holy Spirit, but you need a renewed spirit, you need a fresh fire, a fresh oil in your lamp, just um, receive this prayer right now. I want you to bow your heads and lift your hands right now. I'm going to hold out my hand. I'm going to pray for you. Dear Lord, gracious, heavenly Father, mighty God, King of earth, heaven, and host, we know that you can do all things. Lord, we know you're not limited to time, space, um, surroundings. Lord, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, all those whom are faithful tonight, who want fresh fire and want to work and move in the power of God that you've called them to move in, Lord. They don't want to move in lukewarm, uh, compromised, happy Christian clapping lives. No, Lord, you called them to live extraordinary lives and to do even greater works than you did when you were here on the earth. So, Holy Spirit, I pray that you be so faithful. Lord, we have... We have faith that you will finish the good work that you started. And we pray right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you touch everybody right now on the other end of the camera. Holy Spirit, I pray that you begin to move fresh fire for everything, uh, for everyone right now on the other end of this camera. Right now in Jesus' name. I pray fresh fire, fresh anointing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you uplift and uproot everything that's not of you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you help them burn for you. Holy Spirit, I pray everything that's not of you every wrong desire, every sinful pleasure, everything that's blocking your spirit from working in their life. Lord, I pray that you remove it right now in Jesus' name. I pray that you begin to convict them for the things that you want them to be to remove out of their lives right now in Jesus name. Lord, I pray that you begin to move like you never moved before in their life. Lord, I pray as they open up your word, they begin to receive what you have for them and walk and not by the lip service, but Lord, walk with the feet, Lord, in Jesus name. Lord, I pray that you begin to work on each and every individual's heart right now in Jesus name. Everyone who receives this prayer right now in Jesus name, Holy Spirit, I ask that you fill them right now. I ask that you fill them right now. Fill them with your fire. Fill them with your presence, Lord, so they can walk in your glory, so they can walk in your power, so they can glorify your name, so they can be set free from the bounds of sin and death. Lord, pray. I pray right now a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire on every believer right now, lifting up their hands and receiving with faith. Lord, I pray right now fire. Fire for everyone on the playback. Fire for everyone right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you do the work that only you can do. Lord, I pray every evil and unclean spirit acting in your people, in their lives, Lord, I pray that you begin to uproot this. I curse right now every unclean spirit. I've asked that you, I, Lord, I pray that you uplift everything right by the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel every assignment on your life to kill, steal, and destroy and torment you and put you in disarray. Lord, they will walk in your presence. They will walk in your glory. In Jesus' name, Lord. Show them that you are always been with them and you always been knocking on the door in Jesus name. Show them that you never left. Even show them that you'll be with them in the low places, in the high places, in the desert places, in the dry places. Show them, Lord, that you'll always be with them, Lord, in every and all things that they do, Lord. And I pray that you fill them, Lord, from the head, from the top of their head, from the crown of their head to the soles of the feet with the Holy Ghost and fire right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Um, before I close, <clears throat> I want to say this last thing real quick. So what you see out there in the world, right? What you see out there is a bunch of people who stopped following the law of God and they determine what's right and wrong for themselves. 
And that's why you see destruction, chaos, murder, hatred, violence. You see all these things out there in the world today. You see all these things because it's a nation who's walked away from God. God remains in the same place. He says, um, it says in the Bible, Jesus is always knocking on the door. And whoever opens that door, Jesus and the Father will come in and abide with him. What you have out there is the same thing that happened in the garden. Adam determined what was good and evil for himself. In turn, he got exiled from the garden. What you see out there is a spiritual exile. They're, remo they're, they're removed from God and they're given over to their own way. That's why you see what's going on on the news. That's why you see so much hatred. That's why you see what's going on in the world today. Because these people have decided and no, they will not follow God's law. And God wrote his, God gave you, gave you a conscience. That's why no man can be blameless before God because you have a conscience. God gave us a conscience. Now when we choose to ignore the, con the God-given conscience that everybody has, when we choose to ignore that and determine what is right in our own eyes and not follow God's law anymore, it, it becomes destruction. God gave us this Bible. He gave us the instruction book for life. It's right here in the Bible. If you do not read this Bible, like I've said before, you will not make it to heaven. That's for Christian, that's for unbeliever. You will not make it to heaven if you haven't read, if you do not read that Bible, if you do not take the time to sit down and understand the words that are written in there front to back. When, let's, let's put it this way. What happens if Let's, let's speak about driving. What happens if all the laws for the road, all road laws, they take it out? There's no more stop signs, there's no more traffic lights. What do you get? You get chaos. That's the same thing what happens when we choose to turn away from God and determine what's right and wrong in our own eyes. That's what I wanted to leave you guys with. You know, follow God, follow Jesus. And let nothing stop you. Let no one stop you. At the end of the day, God just wants you. He wants a relationship with you because he created you. He wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want, he doesn't, we're not, I'm not asking you to go to church every Sunday or do, I want you to personally build your relationship with God. That's the only thing that matters. You and God, let God, do, let God worry about the world. God is going to situate them. God is going to situate his world. He's going to get that stuff back in order. What you need to focus on is you and God. Everybody be blessed. So many problems, I'm just trying to turn around. I do it for my family, I'm trying to hold it down. God said it's free, so why we act 